Hello all you beautiful people, how are you doing today? This is Love Tim Tristan, welcome back to my channel. Or if you're new here, welcome, hi! Today we're going to be talking about another Sky Factory 4 tutorial. We are going to be talking about how to set up your auto crafting on the Applied Energistics ME system. And this is going to be tons of fun, we're going to set up something like this, we're going to connect it to the inscribers so they automatically output and to our uh, enriching factory and to the metallurgic infuser. Although you can set it to tons of different machines. Oh, and the furnace. Because, you know, you need stuff in the furnace. Uh, because you can set it up to tons of stuff, but by showing you those different ones, uh, you should be able to set it up to all different kinds of stuff. All right, so let's get started. First of all, we're gonna need some crafting recipes. So the first one we're gonna need is the molecular assembler. And for that, we're going to need four of the iron ingots, two of the quartz glass, one of the crafting station in the middle, and then an annihilation core and a formation core. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the stuff, I do have two prior tutorials on the ME system and how to make everything uh, previously that we had set up. So I will link those down below in case you need those too. All right, so next we're going to make a crafting unit. And we'll probably make several of these. Most of these you're going to make several of. But when you start out, just make as many as you can. All right, so for this one, we're going to make one of the, each of the processors. So calculation, logic, and calculation. Okay, so I said that wrong. It's two calculation, one logic. Um, and it's four iron ingots and two ME Fluix glass. So that'll give us our crafting unit. Next, we need to turn that into... A storage unit. So you're going to take the crafting unit and you're going to pay, place one of the storage components here. Now the storage components is going to determine how much crafting storage space you have available. I did 1k here but in the ones that I set up you'll notice that I actually did 16k's. And so that's just personal preference though it's whatever you want to do. So here is the 1K, but again, you just switch it out with each of the different drives. All right, then we're gonna make the blink patterns, and you're gonna need a lot of these because these are gonna tell the system what we want to make. So for this, we're gonna use three iron ingots on the bottom, three glowstone dust, a fluix crystal, and two quartz glass. Next, we're gonna make the ME pattern terminal, and for that, we're gonna use the crafting terminal with an engineering processing pretty easy. Next we need a interface terminal which is the interface, the illuminated panel, and an engineering processor. Then we're gonna have to make a level admitter. So for this we're gonna need a calculation processor and a redstone torch. And with that we're gonna combine it with the dark illuminated panel again to give us the storage monitor. Now, you don't have to have storage monitors, but it definitely makes stuff a lot easier. I recommend at least having one. But really, you want one for each of these setups that we're gonna have. All right, and then next we're gonna need, uh, this is the full crafting monitor. So you're gonna take the crafting unit and the storage monitor that we just made and turn it into a crafting monitor. And that is how I have it set up here. So you're gonna, this is what you absolutely have to do. You have to have two of the co-processing units and then put one of your crafting storage guides on top. Now, in order to see what you're crafting, you're gonna to wanna to put the crafting monitor there. And it all has to be connected to the system, but as you can see, if the blocks are connected to each other, then it automatically connects to the system as long as it's connected somewhere. Okay, now here's what I did. You have to alternate your pattern of ME interfaces and molecular assemblers. But once you have created an alternate pattern, again, I recommend at least these six to start off with and at least this setup right here. The crafting monitor, like I said, is completely up to you, but it'll show you what you're crafting here. So it's, it's pretty important. I would highly suggest setting one of these up. All right, now, on the system here, we also have our pattern terminal, which is how we're gonna create our patterns. You put the blank pattern here, so you'll have it in your system. You put your blank pattern here, and over here you can switch between a crafting recipe 
or a processing recipe. Now, a processing recipe is something that's going to be made, like, for instance, in a metallurgic infuser. So we already have the redstone in here, so that it's going to ignore that. But what I told it, and I already set up a whole bunch of these. So what I told it was metallurgic infuser. So if we look at this pattern here, it tells us it creates one flux crystal with one crystallized mineral chunk. And that is placed directly into the ME interface directly next to our machine. So in this case, it goes directly behind it. So in the ME interface, we put the pattern right where it says patterns. And once you put it in here, see it looks plain. It'll tell you what it has, but it won't show it. But once you put it in there, it just shows what you're creating with it. So for instance, if I go on the system and I tell it I want a flux crystal, so, and you can do that from any of these terminals, including your wireless terminal. So for instance, if I take out all my flux crystals that I currently have, as you see right there, it says craft. And if it's hard to see, you can always store, sort the view by what you can actually craft. So these are all the different recipes I've put in because these are very common recipes and I'll show you how to do the pattern here in just a minute. But these are very common recipes that I set up like almost immediately because especially if I need more storage cable, uh, storage components uh, for my drives, that's a pain in the butt to make it. I certainly don't want to do it. So the nice thing is it'll craft all of that. So if we look here, craftable. So I took all of the flux out so we would have none. So if we hit that, it says craft. We can craft as many as we want. So you can plus one to just add one more. Plus 10, you can also minus 10. You know, all these are pretty self-explanatory. If you need a ton, you can always do a thousand, but that's quite a bit, so we're not gonna do that. So let's say we want two. Then we're gonna hit next, and it's gonna say that it's gonna take the crystallized chunks. We have two available, so it can do it, and it'll create two of the flux crystals. So then you just hit start, and you hear our metallurgic infuser running because it's so loud, and it's actually cooking them for us automatically. Now, I do have it automatically pulling out, and the way we do that is putting the import bus directly on the machine, and as long as it's connected to the system by the flux cables, then it'll automatically put it in our system. So remember we had none in here? Now we have the two that we told it to craft. So that's how that works. Now let's see how do we make the patterns, okay? So let's say something I don't even have in the system. Let's do pattern for this, that, and let's grab some of that. All right, so you wanna go into your pattern terminal. Make sure you're in the pattern terminal. And it'll look like this at the bottom. The processing is if you want it to go through a machine like what we just did. The crafting is if you want it to uh, just craft a recipe for you. So for instance, you know, I need planks. So I'm gonna tell it to take this and it's gonna automatically say, well, that's gonna make planks. So if that's what you want, I need planks. So you're gonna just hit this in code pattern and there's our pattern. Now we're gonna take it over to the interface terminal and it'll tell us all our different machines we have. So I have advanced subscribers set up, inscribers, excuse me, five of them. I have the factory set up, the furnace, metallurgic infuser, but the molecular assembler, this is where it's gonna craft your regular recipes. So if it's a crafting recipe, it's gonna go in here. So that is that easy. Seriously, that easy. Now, if you have a recipe that it switches and can use different materials, but you don't want it to, you can hit this button here and it doesn't allow substitutions. So if you hit this, right now it's on allow substitutions. But if it's on the regular default mode, it does not allow you to do any substitutions whatsoever. So let's say now we have that in there, and so we have some planks here, but easy peasy, we want it to make us 10 planks. 
it'll start it it'll show up there on the crafting monitor but because it's so fast it's already done and well uh we have our 10 planks easy peasy right well there's a lot more difficult recipes and the reason why i set up these is because it's easier to explain them than to sit here and go through them but let's do another one so if we use uh, for our diamond resin say we want to make some diamond amber So we're gonna go into here And you left click them in <clears throat> And I did that backwards And it doesn't consume the item it just kind of places it there as a placeholder. And you know you have the recipe right, obviously, when it shows over here. So now you can tell it to make you diamond amber. And you can do it with any recipe you want. It doesn't have to be anything specific. Anything you think you're gonna want that you don't want to have to come back and craft yourself. Okay, so now the difference is if you want to set it to a machine. So, for instance, our enriching factory, I have it set up to take, so for the factory, it tells it it's going to take one nether quartz seed, and it's going to put it in the factory and create one pure nether quartz seed. Now, how do you set something like that up? Well, we go in here. Mm, where is our seeds? Okay, so you're going to tell it to take... In the processing you're going to take it and make this is very important if you it's going to take 62 at that point so you want to make sure and you do one so you're going to tell it take one of these seeds and you're going to create again it has to be one one nether quartz crystal and then encode the pattern that is how i set that up now to do it further so you're expanding what it can do what if you don't have any of those seeds well then what so then i set it up to take and that was just pure luck to take one oh because it's a crafting pattern if it's a crafting pattern you can put just one the other ones you have to do it manually so then for this one you're going to tell it to take one sand and one Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, what is it? Is it the crushed quartz? Yeah, the crushed quartz. All right, so hold on. Let me. And again, you could set this up even further if you already had the crushed quartz. I mean, if you don't have the crushed quartz, you could tell it to set it up in the machine. But that's just going further so see how it says okay so now for crafting recipe it's going to take the sand and crush quartz and make two of the nether quartz seed because that's the standard recipe so then i set up the pattern to make it that so now if i go in my terminal and i tell it okay so let's take out the nether quartz seeds and that. So if I tell it now that I want a pure nether quartz crystal, I just want one, it's going to say that it's going to take what I need and craft it. So if I hit start and look over there, it's going to tell us in the process we're trying to make another quartz seed, another quartz. So in the process, it's scheduled to make this and then this. So in here, mm -mm -mm. where, there it is. So it's going to make this, it's just taking a minute.
Okay, and if sometimes if it gets stuck, the reason why I recommend having the monitors is then you can go in here and if for any reason it's just not crafting what you want it to, you can cancel it. Or if you're in the middle of crafting something and you decide you don't need as many or whatever, you can always go in there and tell it not to do it. Okay? All right, now these are a bit more complicated. So I have advanced subs inscribers and I have one, two, three, four, five. The reason why I have five set up is because you want one for each of the presses because in the ME interface above it, you're gonna tell it to craft that one specific thing. And then below it, you're gonna wanna place an import bus to pull it back out and into the system. So I have each one of these set up. Remember, you have to do the printed logic and you, you have to do the printed ones first. So make sure to do that. And then after you do all those, then you can tell it to craft these because then it combines them with a piece of redstone for whichever one you're trying to create. So if we go in here and pull out all the logic processors, tell it to craft one, it says it's going to take all these materials it already has the printed silicone. Um, and it's going to craft that, and then it's going to craft that. So if we press start, you can see there, and you can see it moving. So we know it's working, and now it's putting it all together. And now it's disappeared off the monitor. So if we look in here, then voila, there is our logic processor. All right, now another one. Uh, to set up is the furnace. Now remember with the furnace, anything inputting into it has to be on top. So the interface must sit on top for the furnace. So for the furnace, I did plastic because when I'm doing stuff, a lot of times I need plastic when we're creating all of our machines and stuff. So um, that doesn't go there. So you just put your pattern in here and I just told it to take one dry rubber. It's gonna take it place it in the furnace, cook it, and then on the bottom we have the import to import it back into the ME system. So, mm, there's plastic. Okay, so we're gonna tell it we want one. It's gonna take a dry rubber and it's gonna craft that. Now, while it's doing that, I also wanna point out that I did tell it how to craft dry rubber out of the tiny dry rubber also. So if I don't have any of the dry rubber available, it'll automatically craft the tiny dry rubber. And it's not up there, so uh, plastic. Yep, there we go. And that's it. A lot of people make it complicated. I know my system looks messy right now. This is actually not the way fully I would do it because I would have all these cables hidden, make it all beautiful. But for tutorial purposes, I thought this was perfect. The other thing I want to say is you're gonna want to want you're gonna want to want you're gonna want a dense energy cell connected to your system and have all your power running off this because once you have all these systems set up it's gonna be a power hog it really is and that's why the next thing we're gonna go over next time is solar power so we can start increasing our power but definitely put one of these energy cells on and have everything running off there. Obviously it has to be connected to the energy acceptor, but don't have the cables connected to the energy acceptor, have it connected to the energy cell. All right, any questions or comments, leave them for me down below. Hopefully this was helpful. If you enjoyed it, hit that subscribe button. Till next time, this is Lava Temptress. Don't get burned, bye.